Hello, and welcome to the Dental Marketing Mastery Series. This podcast is brought to you by New Patients Incorporated. I'm Howie Horrocks, the founder of New Patients Incorporated, and along with me once again is my friend and partner and the president of New Patients Incorporated, Mark Dilatush. Hey, everybody. This is Mark Dilatush with the Dental Marketing Mastery Podcast Series. And I don't normally do the intro. Normally, it's the soft, sultry voice of Howie who does those. Um, He's not here today because uh, we have a special guest. Special guest's name is Susan Gunn. Susan, say hello. Hi. Hi. All right. Oh, right. Hello. Hello. So we have uh, Susan Gunn here. Susan's from SusanGunnSolutions.com. You can learn more about her and her company there. But the reason why I wanted to have Susan on today is the end of the year, close to the end of the year. We're in the second week of uh, December as we record this. And many dentists are right now, perhaps only right now, looking at their numbers. Susan Gunn is a... um, is a fraud examiner, uh, specifically with dental offices. And this hits near and dear to our hearts here at New Patients, Inc., because we have two very robust, active, very successful dental offices. Uh, Their marketing campaigns are shut down because those two offices are going into um, fraud examinations, which basically stops everyone dead in their tracks. So I wanted to have Susan... Uh, on our podcast so she can share um, many, well, a few, as many as we can jam into 20 minutes while you're on the treadmill, um, as many of her experiences that, sh- that we can access to, maybe you, you, you might want to connect with her and for some of her expert advice, uh, maybe her books, maybe you're going to see her at the Chicago Midwinter, whatever. I don't want any dentist out there who listens to our podcast to feel like they're alone if they have, um, you know, even if, even if you don't think anything's going on, it's really, really good to have somebody take a look. Right, Susan? Right. And just to let them know, I offer a three, um, a free 30 minute consultation. So there is actually no reason not to just pick up the phone and call me. If they've got a gut feeling, something's going on. If they think that um, there's something wrong, then they need to pick up the phone and call me. Well, okay. We, besides going to SusanGunnSolutions.com, what's your, do you have a, what's your phone number, Susan? Just, just in case they have a pencil and paper in front of them. 888-994-3167. Okay, good. So if you, even if you're just thinking that you might maybe have an issue, give Susan a call. So, and, and how many times, Susan, have you had to go in and do your work when a dentist just thought maybe there was something going on? Yeah, like uh, almost 100% of the time. Right, <laughs> right. Generally what, I tell, yeah, generally what I tell them is if they have a gut feeling something's going on, then it's possible that they have a gut feeling that something's going on and it's right. Right. So, but I developed it because fraud examinations are expensive. And so in, if they are not convinced that there's something going on, then I have a service that I developed just to see. Let's see what we see. Oh, okay. And let's see what we gather. And so I can remote into their practice with them there. They look at what I see through my eyes. I actually train them in the process to look at the reports and here are the reports that you need to look at. Um, Kind of do this at the end of the month and do this at the end of the week. And, you know, you may want to consider changing this up a little bit. I go through all of those things and it's that service is called Ask the Expert. And it's two hours of time whenever they can schedule it. It's not based on me, it's them. But I developed it because of the ones that weren't convinced that anything really was going on. At the end of the call, if we do find something, then they can take what they spent on that two-hour phone call and it wraps into a fraud examination. So they don't have to 
you know, they're not lost the money. Actually, they're not. I haven't had anybody say, I wish I hadn't have done this. All of them go, oh my God, I got so much out of this time together. Because I literally say, look here, look here. Um, here's what you're looking for. Here's how to read this report. Right, right. Uh, to train them to do it. You know, I've built my whole business, Mark, to teach them how to review their practice. Right. And to look at it from a business standpoint, and this is no different, trying to get them to pay attention to what's going on because if embezzlement is happening in their practice, it's not going to go away. It doesn't heal itself. No, 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 no. Yeah. It all gets worse. Right, right. And even if it's, even if it's little things, those little things sometimes can grow into bigger things as employees get more brave, right? Right. Oh, yeah. Brazen. More brazen as well. Brazen. There you go. <laughs> brazen. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, I, and and you and I have been around this dentistry now for three decades or at least close to that or maybe more. Getting there. Getting there. And uh, yeah, we've seen our share of, uh, of these stories. And so that's good. Yeah. So even if... I tell them. I tell them if they, because everybody always asks me how often it happens in dentistry. And they're always surprised when we say three out of five. And and that's an estimate. We really do think it's three out of five, about 60% of the practices, which is high. Right. But the reality of it is, if they own a practice for 30 years, someone is going to steal from them. Right. I mean, it's part of owning a business, no, right? No, I, I, and, and Howie and I own a business and, you know, we've been stolen from. So this isn't, this isn't just isolated to dentists. It just happens to be our audience. <laughs> exactly. Right. It's, a, it's a business. Yeah, it's every business. I mean, I, I, I wish, you know, somebody could come in and guarantee us that we wouldn't be ripped off too. But, you know, we can't. So that's why we, yeah, that's why we have folks, yeah. folks like Susan. So... So that's cool. So if a dentist is wondering, maybe, do I think, I sense, or Mary's been acting a little weird lately, or, wow, that's a big ring Mary got (laughs) over the holidays, (laughs) or, wow, that's a nicer car than I have. Um, Yeah, I mean, if there's, if there's signs on the, if there's signs out there, then I can see where a dentist, especially if it's a trusted member of the team, would be hesitant to actually, I bet you some dentists would be hesitant to even to find out, even if it was true. Right. Yeah. I've had lots of those phone calls uh, where the person has been there for 20 something years and yeah. which I will tell you it, it's my average case is about 125,000 average. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not what you charge. No, 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 no. That's oh. the average. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> one case a year. That's all I need to do. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, the average embezzlement case is one hundred and twenty-five thousand. Okay. So, so the office loses one twenty-five. Is what you're saying? Okay. Right. Yeah, and and the probably the average length of time that the person's there that steals is eight to ten years, and that's because they end up being trusted. Beyond anything. Sure. Little by little, they take over more of the trust of the financial duties of the practice. When it, that's really nice, we'd love to do just the things that we are um, uh, designed, certified, clinicalized <laughs> to do. Right, right. Own a business. That doesn't always happen. Yeah, so now, now I'm sure there's dentists listening to this going to themselves, well, I'm going to solve my whole problem and I'm just going to do all my own bookkeeping myself. I'm never going to delegate any of it to anyone. I'm going to stay up on Saturday nights, not have a life, not go anywhere with my spouse, never have a hobby, never go on vacation. Yeah, not- I can never trust anyone, right? No, that's not optimal. I tell that's- everybody that if they spend a couple of hours a week, doing some of these things and there's a way to set it up um, right. they can set their systems up. I actually offer a short-term uh, coaching solution that's four months long. It's based on my newest book, 
money in, money out that you and I talked about. Money in, money out. Is that the one on, is, you can get that on Amazon? Yeah. Okay, cool. uh, I didn't want to write a book on embezzlement because that just seems kind of dumb um, because that can get in everybody's hands, right? Well, then so, you're just teaching people how to embezzle. <laughs> I, yeah, that's right. I see them talking about it all the time on Dental Town, and I'm like, hey, guys, you ought to shut up. Yeah. But, but they There's respond that. me like, what? We're not doing anything wrong. It's like, all right, whatever. Go ahead. So you're what I did was I wrote a book about the systems and procedures they need to oversee in the practice. Here's what you need to put into place. Okay. Best practices for financial organization, if you will. And so anyone can read that and put the best practices in place. But I, I'll tell the doctors, the reason that I wrote that book was to help prevent, help protect the practice. You're not actually, and I have to be careful to not say the word prevent because there's not anything that you can do that will prevent someone from stealing when they want to steal. No, no, of, of course not. Right. Deter them. Right. But protect your practice. Heck yeah. You put those things into place and you'll catch them while it's $5,000, not $120,000. Exactly. There's a big difference. Yeah. There's three, in fact, I'll tell you, there's three things that dentists can do to protect their practice. And they're pretty easy to do. You ready? Go ahead. They got their pencils ready? Go ahead. The first one I'll tell you is to lead with integrity. If they're doing the right things, they're setting the tone, they're setting the precedence for their practice. That means doing things above board and being honest in all of those areas. So good. That means you want me to depositing the cash. That's what I'm talking uh, that's, about. I, was gonna, uh, I, knew, I knew you and I direct when we talk to each other, but you can be direct with our audience. So basically what that means is stop hiding your cash. Yeah. Quit taking it home, yeah. put it in the bank. Yep. Um, there's things that, you know, people will do to fudge insurance claims. The problem with doing that is your staff see, sees it happening. And now they've got a open door to steal from you and to hold that over your head. Oh my God. Yeah. And I mean, and it's huge. Yeah. I, it, it's, it's enormous. I, we had a, um, I had a client way back in the day who called me the day after Thanksgiving and told me that he had an affair with his office manager and now she's stealing from him. Oh yeah. So well, of, of course she's cases, stealing from him. Yeah. Of my <laughs> cases, 30% of them have had an affair. There you go. There you go. Right. Yeah. That, oh. So is that, is that step number two? Did I just, did I just guess step number two? No, okay. no, no, right. no, no. no, that's step one. Leave oh, with okay. integrity. You're not going to have to okay. marry either. So leave with integrity. Well, and, and let's talk about that for a second with yeah. the affair. You, they're, not, they're not hiding it from anybody in the practice. No, Everyone of course. In the practice. Of course. No. And so, and outside and patients, which, you know, really, um, does not do well for building no, your business. No. So the second thing I'll tell you is to review the business reports. There are some very simple things that you can do to review the business reports. And I tell them, here's a set of reports that, that other people can print for you, put them on your desk and you take them home. Right. It's not what you do. It's, it's what you give the appearance, appearance that you're doing. Because if you take them home, you're telling them, I'm looking at these reports. Sure. It's the and same so, thing with your, your credit card yeah. refunds. Like, hey, yeah. hey, Mary, what were these credit card refunds? Which of our patients did we give a refund to? As long as you just ask that question, that lets Mary know that you're aware. Yeah, well, Mary shouldn't be doing credit card refunds. No, I know. <laughs> I know. I'm just, I'm just, but, but you know where I was going with that. I do. Okay. I've actually had several cases. I'm glad you brought that up. I've had several cases this last year yeah. where Mary, where Mary gave a big credit on her credit card of through course. the practice, credit card terminal. So yeah. Mary's no longer at the practice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So like, no. But that's another way. That's one of the reasons I adamantly uh, suggest to not give credit card refunds. But the second reasons is then. 
what is deposited into the bank does not match what uh, your practice software says they took in. Right. So there's a difference. Um, but so the third thing is so the first is lead with integrity. The second is review the business reports. And there's a way to have them created, have your systems created to make it easier to be able to review the business reports. There's also a way for the third thing, which is oversee the practice. When you're overseeing the practice, there's a way to set that up so that it's easier to oversee the practice. I suggest two hours a week, and that's it. But that requires them uh, systems to be put into place. So it is only two hours. Right. I truly, I get it. They're there the whole time. They've got everything. I know. There's so much for them to do. I don't want to add anything else to right. them. But they got to do some of this. Right. Yeah, even if it was, even, you know, even if, the, even if the reports are run by somebody else and handed to them, at least, my goodness, at least take the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it, you know, and you and I've talked about this a lot. First and foremost, they can never believe that it wouldn't happen no, to them for never, whatever yeah. reason. You know, because right. they're paying attention. You know, they would, right. nothing would ever, I trust her. Well, all the embezzlements that I've ever investigated have been done by yeah. somebody that was trusted. Hey. So it just happens. And it can happen to some of the most amazingly smart people. Look at Bernie Madoff. <laughs> I mean, right. amazingly smart people. So yeah. have you ever gotten so, anyone locked up? Because that's what everybody anything. wants to know. Oh, yeah. Lots. Oh, really? Good, <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Everybody's listening to this going, come on, man. Did she get anybody locked up? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I recommend prosecution because when you don't, they go right down the road. Oh, sure. And more, more now. It, I mean, it didn't used to be uh, nearly as obvious that they went down the road to some out of the practice. And I've had so many dentists that say, well, I just figured out another reason to let them go. Well, when you do that, they literally go right down the road. When you don't prosecute, there's nothing in their record that says, hey, they stole. Right. So there's no recourse. Yeah. You know, we get, um, we run advertising for our company and dentists and dental team members will click on these guides that we give away. We trade information with them so that we can market to them. Anyway. Um we have a piece of software that goes out and does a background check on the people that we bring in to our database. And uh, more than a couple times we've run into uh, fraud and court cases. And I wondered to oh, myself yeah. when I saw the, cause the, that's public knowledge. So you can just Google it. Right. Um, and so a couple things hit my mind. The first one was, I wonder if their current employer knows this. That's the first thing. Then the second thing was, how stupid is this person not to change their email address? <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Right? So, you know, well, they might how, be smart. Well, and yeah, a lot no, of times we a background check in the immediate area because, you know, Mary, Mary said that she hasn't moved. And that right. she's, she's moved around a little bit, but it's all been locally. Well, what you didn't know is that Mary has been convicted of embezzlement in three surrounding states. Right. So it's like you have to do a broader spectrum and some yep. things don't show up on some reports. And so you have to do a federal one. And there's a whole lot. In fact, I have a uh, article. I'll tell your listeners. I have an article on my website that set that's called Let No Background Go Unchecked. Okay. For them to read. It gives them exact information what they need to order for a background check. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. You know, um, this time of year, just before the 31st of December, that magic hour when we move money back and forth. And, um, you know, April 14th or 13th, um, we all pay attention to these things and we pay attention to them with a little bit of a greater well, Focus. and they need to, Mark, because this time of year is when they ramp up the stealing. Right. Because no one's paying attention. Well, yeah, nobody's paying attention. And I just got off the phone just now with one of our docs. And you know, we said, hey, man, how you doing? He goes, 
<laughs> I'm busier than a one-legged man in an ass kicking contest. Basically, he said, I'm taking off two weeks at the end of the year. So everybody in my whole practice wants to be seen like now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm having 40, $50,000 a weeks. That's great. But I couldn't even, I don't, I haven't even, I don't even know if my whole staff's here. He's like, I, I've been just going back and forth in between three operators for the last 12 hours straight. I have no idea. If, I don't even know if it's sunny outside. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's, and that's what happens. Like you said, that's, that's when they get taken yeah. advantage of when it's that crazy. Yeah, it, yeah, they do. They do. And so they got it. They got to really still take a breath and look and watch what's happening. Yeah. So Susan, you also do speaking engagements. So we went through, all right, so you have this free look-see that anybody can call you or any dentist can call you up and just have you take a look. Then you have this two hours where you actually log on with them and show them what you see. That'll be you know helpful. You have your money in, money out. It's available on Amazon. All the dental spouses out there can just go get that uh, for a gift for your spouse. Anyway, um, speaking gigs. I know, um, I know you're at the Chicago Midwinter. What can a dentist expect? Uh, first of all, what other, you know, where else are you going to be? Um, but specifically to the Chicago Midwinter, because it's a big show. Um, what do you do from the stage when you talk about this? Is it dentists only? Is it dentists? Yes, dental, dentists and spouses only. Well, they have like security there? Yeah. Or like, how does that work? <laughs> Uh, well, so a long time ago, when I was speaking at the Northern California meeting, um, we had to get a bodyguard because an office manager tried to yeah. get out. <laughs> it is, but it is. <laughs> that was really bizarre. She threatened me. And, um, I'm, and we took it very seriously. And so did the CDA. They were amazing. Right. It had, in fact, we just, we joke about that too. Now, <laughs> right. so. but my bodyguards at the CDA, but. But Chicago, nobody's threatened me. It's That's just uh, uh, me and me and the you snow. And the snow and a bunch of docs but who want to who want to and a bunch of docs and spouses. Okay. So it is limited to doctors and spouses, and and it's my understanding they can't even uh, sign up for the course unless they are a doctor or a spouse. So okay, cool. And it's this one's going to be a really good one. So they if they have any opportunity to attend, would highly recommend it. But I'm also speaking at the Henman again this year. Oh, good. Okay. California Dental Association. North or South? Um, uh, Southern okay. Anaheim, yeah, that's a big Anaheim. one. Those three big ones right there. The, so they have opportunities to check it out. Awesome. Susan, thank you so much for taking a piece of your Friday um, uh, from, from Howie and I and the whole team here at NPI. Uh, if you, even if you think something's going on, this is the person in dentistry to get a hold of. You don't, this is it. This is her. Her name's Susan Gunn, SusanGunnSolutions.com. Go to her seminar um, with your spouse in Chicago or any of those other places. Get her book. Have her take a look-see with you uh, on a web meeting. If you're just even even an inkling of an idea that something's going on in your practice, get her involved so that you can uh, not be one of the ones that are at a buck 25 before you find out. So Susan, thank you so much. Um, if I don't talk to you before the holidays, have an awesome, you're going, you're going on a, on a vacation. That's, that's next month. That's, oh, that's oh, yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to Mexico next month too. So. so after your listeners here, I have to answer all their phone calls. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm taking a little bit of a vacation in January before, before all the speaking and all that hits. Yeah. That's usually the, the, yeah. end, the end of January on through May almost is the normal. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. Well, Susan, thank you very much. We really, really appreciate it. We'll probably have you come back on in about six months just for a refresher, just for the new listeners, because it's, it it's really, really a terrible thing when the entire practice has to get shut down in order for an audit, to, you know, the complete audit to be done. It's almost like you have to suspend time in order for them to do their work. And, um, ah, but I don't. Okay, well then, then why, didn't, no. why didn't you do these two I really, offices? I probably I, because we I, found, I, we found out after after the fact. That's why. Yeah, I remote in after hours, so nobody's oh, okay. there. 
Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. And uh, we're definitely going to have you back on. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Mark. Thanks. We hope you've enjoyed our podcast today. You can get all of our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, and Libsyn.com and on our website, newpatientsinc.com. 